The Nuggets comfortably took game one of the 2023 NBA Finals in Denver behind Nikola Jokic's 27.14 assist night. And in a game where they shot under 30% from downtown, the Nuggets dominated with their size advantage. Right out of the gate, Denver looked for Jokic on this pet cut that they love, and Bam Adebayo tried to front him to take away the post up, but Jamal Murray is simply too good for this and uses Jokic as a screen, turning the corner for a shot at the rim. Bam actually tried to front Jokic again a few minutes later on the low block, so Joker just sprinted into a pick, and that gave Murray space for a cozy mid-range pull-up. Here's a third early instance of Bam fronting to deny Jokic the ball. Aaron Gordon drives at him this time, ends up spinning off Butler, who deflects it, right back to Gordon for an easy score. And Gordon was the story to start this game. Jimmy basically ignores him to come help in the Murray-Jokic two-man game, ends up double-teaming Joker, who immediately finds Gordon, and he'll make about one in three of these, but airmails this one. So a minute later, Denver uses Gordon as the screener so they can't ignore him. Miami switches that screen, and oh, that was a mistake because Vincent is like a rag doll next to Aaron. Jokic makes the perfect entry pass, and Gordon stamps it. On this one, Gordon gets deep position against Max Struess, and he's just way too big for him, too. And this all starts way back when Miami has the ball. Butler uses a screen to get Gordon off him so he can back down Contavious Caldwell Pope. That causes Gordon to slide over and help, which puts the Nuggets' defense in rotation. And when Struess takes the three, Gordon is matched up with him, so he sprints right to the front of the rim before anyone else is down there. Normally, Bam could go help, but Jokic sees the mismatch and instantly goes to set a screen so Bam can't leave him. Murray shoots a perfect entry from half court, and Gordon's weight training does the rest. These cross matches are powerful. That's when the defense matches up in an unintended way based on the offensive possession. And again, Butler asks for a screen to shed Gordon. Remember that? Gets into the paint where it's blocked not once, but twice when Jokic gets him. And when the Nuggets push it into the front court, Aarons runs straight to the rim and Caleb Martin is cross matched on the 6-8 Gordon. Murray gets it to him again, and he uses a few power dribbles to bench press Martin into the basket. This one is not about switching, but effort. Gordon's still on Butler when the shot goes up. Then he sprints, but Butler jogs and asks for a switch. And that leaves the diminutive Gabe Vincent to wrestle with the bear. They clear out for him again, and this is just way too easy. At this point, I'm not sure anyone on the Heat wanted to guard Gordon because when he brings it down this time, Butler asks someone else to pick him up. Martin says, I'll take Murray. Struess comes over but says, I don't want him, Jimmy. And finally, Gordon just drives it home and Euros in two more. A big thing here is that Gordon is Denver's weakest shooter. So when he takes these cross matches to the post, it's hard to help off anyone. And when Miami finally double teams, the sharp shooting Michael Porter Jr. is open in the corner for a great look. So Miami needs to watch out for these cross matches throughout the series because when a smaller player's on Gordon, he can go right to the rim and Jokic might throw the best entry passes in the sport. As always, Nikola is actually the bigger issue here. Butler is behind the play after a score, so it's four on four. Bam is panicking about switching to Gordon because that puts someone like the 6'5 Struess on Jokic. They briefly miss a chance to switch before Joker flashes to the elbow. Butler doubles, and it's a perfect pass, and this time Porter drills it. Here's one where Adebayo gambles for a steal in the backcourt. That turns into a five on four, and they briefly swarm Jokic, but someone has to pick up Murray, so two small guards are forced to foul. And this one's my favorite of them all, where the Heat get a dunk, but Murray instantly sprints down the middle of the floor. And because Kyle Lowry doesn't sprint with him, 
Bam needs to pick him up. Murray understands the mismatch he's created, so he patiently waits to post up Jokic against a smaller player, and the Heat are forced to double, which is not doctor recommended because Joker always makes the perfect pass. And the Nuggets have this down to a science with Gordon setting a little pin-in screen for the shooter. Denver's size also played a role on the other end. We saw Porter block Butler from behind. So later in the half, when Jimmy attacked him in pick and roll, he's looking for Porter's rear view pursuit, drops it to Bam instead. Struess and Adebayo nearly collide. And then Murray comes over and locks up any driving opportunities before Butler steps out of bounds. As Mike De La Rosa detailed on the More Thinking Basketball channel this week, Porter's defense has improved a ton for the Nuggets, and he can really use his length at the rim or to bother shooters contesting from behind them, which is key because Miami is basically pulling Jokic into the action every time, and against Butler, he's dropping back, which almost concedes the mid-range shot, but Porter's giant contest from the side can throw off the smaller Butler. I thought Jimmy was a little passive at times in this game. He's looking back for Porter here instead of attacking Jokic in all this space. And the Heat find a closeout to attack in the corner. And instead of shooting, Butler hot potatoes it to Bam instead of kicking it to the corner. So Jokic can close out and it's an empty trip. I was also surprised in the third when he had Jokic in isolation, and instead of attacking, they screen for him, which lets the Nuggets switch, and then he doesn't attack Porter in space either. Denver starts scrambling around, and again that length shows up on the contest. The Nuggets defense switched more screens than usual in this game, and KCP is almost as tall as Butler, so there's no real mismatch there and they can switch again at the top without giving up anything. And when a fake handoff fools Jokic, Porter's size is there to protect the goal perfectly. And even on the second chance, when a cutter slips into the paint, Porter is there again. Even the Denver backcourt is big. KCP's 6'6 in shoes and Murray's about an inch shorter and that's big enough to help at the rim against Bam here and then Jokic can grab and go and they're off to the races again and with Adebayo behind the play there's just no size in the paint for the Heat. I even thought Miami had issues navigating screens around Denver's bigger bodies. Butler forgets to help here and it's another layup. And this time, Jokic's wide frame sets the pick. Bam doesn't want to leave him, and it's a dunk for MPJ. In addition to their size advantage and transition mismatches, Jokic and Murray were too much to handle in the half court. We've talked about this dominant two-man game extensively, and it's still a puzzle to solve for the Heat, because if you focus on one of them too much, the other guy just kills you. Miami actually tried to switch their ball screen a few times, and that was problematic because Jokic can abuse the smaller player, or Denver can attack Bam away from the hoop, setting a beautiful little flare screen here for Murray, and Joker's having fun setting up his teammates. It was actually a big scoring night for Adebayo on offense, but these were mostly shots from the mid-range because the Heat weren't really able to generate any rim pressure throughout the game, taking just two free throws. Butler did have some successful possessions posting up. He has the cross match with Murray this time and finds an open corner shooter, but I think he needs to pressure Denver's defense more to keep up with their potent offense. The Nuggets varied their coverages all night with Jokic, mixing between the drop and hedging to the ball briefly, only to recover back to Bam, forcing a turnover on this one. And as only he can do, Joker faked jumping out at the ball here, only to drop back, and that move really threw off Gabe Vincent, who ended up driving with Murray behind him, and Jamal's length contests a hard shot. Eric Spolstra is an incredibly creative coach, and I expect changes heading into game two, because in game one, Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets were just way too big for Miami, and they now have a 1-0 lead in the NBA 
finals. If you want to work in basketball, I have the place for you. It's Sports Business Classrooms, immersive program inside Summer League in Las Vegas. Past instructors in this program have included Commissioner Adam Silver, Mike D'Antoni, and tons of other industry leaders in the NBA and in media. Sign up using the code Great day for $300 off. There's more information in the description box below if you are interested. To directly support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinking basketball. We have our proprietary stats board that updates throughout the season and the playoffs, a discord community, and more. Thanks as always for watching this one all the way through. And of course, I hope you are having a great day.